preparing you today for tomorrow with the latest in the business and economic landscape of Sri Lanka is our aim of Biznomics. I am Tarandu Amrasekara and welcome to your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. The fertilizer related concerns of Sri Lanka, the agriculture crisis that we were facing, what is going on exactly here? So many different parties are saying a plethora of confusing mixed things, sending mixed signals to the market. But our aim is to demystify all that and set the record right and give you a vivid, clear picture of how things are right now. And we have a very special guest who is returning to Biznomics, someone who was with us not too far back. But the importance, the vitality of this matter is such that it's indeed something we need to repeatedly discuss to understand the current situation. And our special guest for today is none other than Professor Buddhi Marambe, the Professor of Crop Science from the Faculty of Agriculture at the University of Peradeniya, joining us all the way from Kandy. Professor Marambe, absolute pleasure to see you with that vibrant, nice smile of yours as always. Welcome back to Bisnomics, sir. Thank you very much for calling me in once again. Professor, the last time you came, you shared so much of insights and I believe uh, both our TV audiences, online audiences, they had responded to it quite well. My question to you once again, this is a topic I believe that keeps on evolving on a very regular basis. We see so much of uh, media halabaloo on this all the time. Now, the current status of this fertilizer and the agriculture crisis, I believe I am doing justice to the problem by calling it a crisis because the way I see it, it is a crisis. Yeah. So, what's the current status of it? Now, we know that the Mahakanya has started. So, our agriculture output, is it in jeopardy? Professor, people are saying different things, but the people need to know the truth. So, lay it out on the table for us. Thanks, Farindu. Let me answer the question that you asked, whether it's in jeopardy. Answer is yes. So, let me start from that point. And you gave a very good introduction at the very beginning, saying that we are at a very confusing state. That's true, Farindu. Too much of things are happening, especially in the policy, for front, policy front, where it sometimes it's very difficult to track on. I mean, an academic, a scientist, even for a politician, to say what's going on. But let me tell you this very, very clearly. We started, the whole saga started seven months ago when the cabinet decided to ban importation of the synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. So it's, it's seven months, as I told you right now. And the end result being, people still do not know what to do, very unfortunately. And our agriculture is in deep trouble. But at the very last minute, few days ago, uh, I think it's, it's really important to understand that government has at least realized what's going to happen and what is in store for all of us. It's not a good sign at all, Tarin. Remember I told you at the previous occasion as well, our yields are going to decline, the farmer livelihoods are going to be affected negatively, Correct. and our econ economy will be in a downturn. It's not going to do any good. And Professor, let me interject here if, with your permission. We are a country, no matter what problem we had, Food security and food was never a problem. Exactly, Tarindu. I mean, our, our agriculture has evolved over years and over centuries as well. Forget about the history. Since gaining independence for the past seven plus decades, agriculture has evolved and prospered. And we are at a look situation, Tarindu, since 2008, we are self-sufficient. Okay, let's do not use that word. At least we produce more than what we require to consume. And we have surpluses, except for the years where there was climate vagaries. The things were moving very well. The maize industry was picking up. And everything went for a six because of a drastic decision taken to change the whole system overnight. A system that was moving forward very well. That's where the issue is. That Correct. A progressing system. Exactly. So, Professor, now... The farmers are claiming, now even when this issue was going on, now government was saying that they are going to get uh, organic fertilizer and not with the chemical. But then I recently heard another professor saying that there is nothing called 100% organic fertilizer. There is some chemical aspect all the time in some way. Yeah. So um, the farmers, the government was saying, no, we are getting the fertilizer to the farmers. But the farmers are saying, no, we are not getting any fertilizer. Now, we saw recently, the I believe the waterways have been opened up to provide water for the farmlands, but the farmers were saying, no, we are not going to come and cultivate because without the fertilizer, how are we going to really do that? So farmers are claiming that they didn't get any fertilizer, but the authorities keep saying, no, no, fertilizer is coming. We have given it to a lot of people. Uh, the others will get it shortly, etc., etc. So who is really saying the truth here? <laughs> I think the farmers are telling the real truth because they don't have access 
at least the availability of the important agricultural inputs are not there. I mean, forget about giving it free of charge. They are not available even to buy at a price Correct. and at a reasonable price. Let exactly. me put it that way, right? But you see, the, when, when the government come into power, naturally there are a lot of pledges and we have a very good national policy framework where they have identified a section on agriculture saying that this is how the way forward would be for Sri Lankan agriculture. All those were written very clearly and then came this sudden decision. Maybe there are different reasons and there are different scenarios that are happening on backstage. We do not know about this, but we really know is addition be made which has affected negatively the Sri Lankan agriculture and Sri Lankan people. Gum, the farming community is natural because they were pledged saying that all the requirements, forget about the name of the fertilizer, but in terms of plant nutrients will be provided to them at the correct time. And in most of the cases, the pledges for they are saying that it will be free of charge. And all when all those premises are given thorough, though, naturally have to deal as human beings, they have to deal on one exactly. hand. As human beings, the expectations are high. Exactly. See? And you little while ago very correctly said the water issues have taken place. And I mean, water is a precious resource, Tarindu. And water is not only used for agriculture, it's for human consumption and animal consumption. I'm talking about the direct consumption yes, yes. as well. See, I mean, this is a package that has been taking place over the years. And farmers naturally will tell the government that we are not going to cultivate when the other agricultural inputs are not being made available, even at a price. Once again, a reasonable price. What happened with respect to the government, as far as I see, is that they made a big miscalculation. They came up with this idea with a noble objective, I think, with the, the overall, overall scenario, but the implementation is the one that went wrong. Right. Miscalculations are done continuously. I mean, looking at the way that the government decided to bring in organic fertilizer at a time where they were not even dreaming of doing that, right? The miscalculation and wanting was it for 100%. Exactly. And, and the miscalculation is that they believe that there are adequate quantities of organic matter that can provide the adequate amount of nutrients to the crop. That did not happen. When they realized that the bus, the bus has gone, and we have been telling this from square one. I'm not to go against the government, Tarek, yeah. but telling the government and the policymakers the reality, the scientific basis of agriculture and crop production, saying that if you provide the adequate quantities of nutrients at the correct stage of growth of the plant, then of course plant will yield. I mean, I brought a lot of examples in the previous case as well. Correct. Need not repeat all those things right now. But then these are the miscalculations. And those miscalculations, to me, I may be wrong certainly in, in, in certain parts, but when you look at the type of advice that have been accepted by the government, I think that is where the biggest mistake is. People who gave wrong advice and people who bought that wrong advice and decided to implement things on the ground, looking at a national economy, I mean, without considering the national level food security, all are at fault. But you, can, you cannot go for a blame game, Tarindu, although I said everyone is at fault. Okay. There are ways and means that we could have done that, we have missed many buses, very unfortunately. Professor, and some of the examples that were brought in by the government authorities, because let's admit, I mean, we do see sometimes the government also taking examples and saying, look, okay, here we are in this person's farmland and see, he's doing organic. And then they give examples like where they say, look, what about your household? And in our households, we are growing without all these uh, chemical fertilizers, etc. But uh, now I'm not an agriculture specialist, but from the simple business sense that I have, that I'm understanding here is that it's one thing to have a small plot of land and do um, organic, use organic fertilizer and not use any chemical fertilizer and do agriculture in that. It's one thing to do uh, farming or agriculture or grow some trees or some kind of a fruit plant in your backyard. That's just one tree or two trees we are talking about, Professor. Uh, and doing that, uh, and you might be able to do that without any chemical fertilizer, etc. But it's another thing when you are looking at a whole country and trying to uh, all of a sudden go overnight uh, organic. Am I right? I mean, yeah, it doesn't yeah. make sense. You are quite correct. You make a lot of sense. I must tell you, right? You asked the question and gave the answer as well. It's not like doing agriculture in our backyard, as you quite correctly said, Tarangu. This is not dealing with one or two plants. I mean, we are talking about commercial agriculture. You are talking about country's food security. Of course, anybody can argue when the household food security is met, collectively that is national level food security. But not overnight. No, not overnight. And even, even in the long run, this is a very impractical thing, Tarangu. I mean, there are enough evidences globally for people, for countries that made an effort to do so. We should have learned a lesson from that. Unfortunately, it did not happen that way.
Professor, now fertilizer is one issue, but now at the same time, we see about uh, the pesticide matter. Now, we heard some farmers saying, okay, fertilizer is something, but pesticide, now the rainy season is there, there is so much of various uh, like weeds which are growing and there are so many pests, I mean seasonal pests which are coming and trying to land on these crops and kind of destroy the crops and so on. Is there any alternatives? Because we saw farmers saying and openly saying, look, and we saw farmers were very angry, Professor. Naturally, yeah. it's their yeah, livelihood, yeah. Yeah, right? right? So they were saying, okay, fertilizer is one thing. At least get us the pesticide because we need to get rid of these pests which are, which are there on the crop. Professor, is there any other alternative to pesticide which is uh, pragmatic and can be used? Or is there no harm in you really using pesticide? Because I remember the last discussion we had where you said, it's not about the pesticide or the fertilizer, it's about sometimes the uncontrolled usage is the problem. So even pesticide being blocked, we saw they said, oh, chemical, anything chemical is bad. Yeah, chemical yeah. pesticide is bad. Yeah. Was that a wrong decision? Yeah. Tarindu, let, let us put it this way, uh, look at it this way. You and me, in our day-to-day -day life, our, our lifestyle or our life will not depend on one event. Like in that case, Tarindu, when you manage a crop, it's a package. It's a package of events. And when one misses, the whole system will fail. That we have to understand. And up to now, you asked a very valid question right now. Even last time you did the same. We have been talking about fertilizer because that was the hit and that's where the initial requirements has to be met at the beginning. But then, of course, pesticides follow. As a technique, I must tell you, Tarindu, it's all issues related to pest and diseases. But pesticides are not the only solution, I must tell you, right? Synthetic pesticides, there are enough techniques and technologies available. What we have to do, Tarindu, we have to understand the ecology and biology of an agricultural ecosystem. I mean, this is what you cannot take it simple. It's a very complex situation in, in practice. Why pesticide came into action? Because of the selectivity of the pest, you don't need to kill everything, every, every, every biological organism in the ecosystem by using a pesticide, right? So it definitely makes sure you target at certain pests. Now, let me tell you one important thing, Tarindu. While, while talking about pesticide and plant protection, take paddy for example. The paddy varieties are being bred while making sure there's at least moderate tolerance to majority of the pest and diseases in this country. So the crop is made, the crop it's is engineered. Exactly. Crop is made for that. And because of that, the use of insecticides and fungicides in a paddy crop is relatively low. But the weedicides are the biggest problems right now that we have because crop is not engineered in such a way. What we call in simple term as this, wild pellet. Wild That's quite right. And that is what people require mostly in addition to, of course, there are certain technologies that people will require depending on the location. I mean, just one measurement will not fit everyone in a class. Uh, we all know that, right? Same thing applies to agriculture in Correct. practice as well. So what the government and the policymakers and the Department of Agriculture should focus more is for weed control. In a, in a crop like paddy, we are the growing lowland. People think, people talk high saying that management of water can solve a lot of problems. It can solve part of the problem, Tharindu, not all. Remember, weeds have evolved. They have been in nature for a longer period of time. They have got adjusted to the system. So their control has to be done very carefully and should be meticulously planned. That is where the issue is. Professor, correct me if I'm wrong, but I also believe that all this sudden blocking of fertilizer also gave birth to some kind of a black market in certain parts of the country because I really enjoy talking with people. So sometimes when I, if I'm going in a cab or if I'm even going by a tuk-tuk, I end up talking. I'm like, so what's going on these yeah, days? Yeah. Because for me, rather than some of these market reports and all, you can really get the pulse of the economy by talking to each and every person yeah, on right. the road, yeah. people from all walks of mm. life. And some people told me, oh, I'm into agriculture, but I'm running this cab part-time. I'm like, so how is uh, fertilizer? How do you deal with it? Some people gave me very strange answers. They said, oh, you know, we get it through the north. You know, some fishermen, you know, they managed to get it through these Indian connections and they are bringing it and selling it, but of course, at 10 times the price. Exactly. Am I right, Professor? You are quite right. You, I, mean, I mean, history is repeating. It's very sad to see that, Tarindu. When glyphosate was banned, I mean, banning, that's okay. I mean, with, with a reason, when you do that. When it was banned in 2015, and even yesterday I saw in news, a person, a farmer, bringing in an illegally imported glyphosate pack to a TV station and showing it to the audience. I mean, that's the pathetic scenario. What has happened, Tarindu, finally, we have blocked or banned a product that was quality tested and controlled by our own people, mm. make use of it through recommendations and, given and way finally to the given market. way to black market. Understood. First, we are going to come back into more details on this. 
Stay tuned, we will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomics. Welcome back to Bisnomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. Our focus today is on the latest developments in the fertilizer and the agriculture crisis. What's going on? Who's saying the truth? And as citizens, what do we need to know? Is the food security of this country in jeopardy? And we are in conversation with an expert on this topic, who is none other than Professor Buddhi Marambe. Professor, now, a lot of people, when they talk about fertilizer and agriculture, they are referring to one of the most recent developments which we saw. So the, I believe the government tried to import certain quantities of um, organic fertilizer. There was issues in that getting approved because they had uh, so many so many times when they tested it in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan authorities, I believe the quality testing authorities, they said, no, we cannot accept this. We saw members from the Chinese diplomatic community coming in, having discussions with the minister. We saw the whole communication going back and forth. And um, at the same time, now we hear recent development, we hear that, yes, the local authorities are not willing to accept it, but still we have to pay six million dollars to this Chinese company. Professor, aren't we becoming the laughing stock in Asia? <laughs> You're quite right we, the, when you look at the way things have been happening. But one thing, Tarindu, I cannot comment on certain things because I've never seen the documents. For example, I've never seen the tent document and I, did, and I do not know even right now what the conditions were in the LC, the letter of credit. credit so yes. the payment, I heard this thing is going to happen, but yes. fortunately or unfortunately, there's a pending court case yes. right which has been postponed to 30th november so it's still on the on the on the on the hangout so we'll yes. we'll see what's going to happen on those yes, things but course. let me talk about what has gone the, the wrong crux of the, the matter, crux of the exactly. matter. yes uh, remember i told you a little while ago that the government initially did a big miscalculation saying that we have the material required but it's not then of course one of the one of the ways to solve the issue though we do not agree scientifically is to import organic fertilizer mm -hmm. and that's what they try to do and when the samples come in there's a there's a regulation in this country uh, tarindu if a material agricultural input come by the name of fertilizer it has to go through the National Fertilizer Secretariat and it comes under the purview of the Regulation of Fertilizer Act, number 68 of 1988. Yeah. That's act. But when the tag called organic come into place, when it, the fertilizer become organic fertilizer, there's another act that's going to be powerful. So even though the National Fertilizer Secretariat is responsible in calling for tender and doing things over there, once the organic fertilizer come in, there should be a quality control at the National Plant Quarantine Service because the Plant Protection Act number 35 of 1999 comes into effect. This is where the issues went wrong. Mm. The NFS brought the material. But, uh, Professor, I believe it went wrong. However, it looks like for the for the good fortune for of the, the benefit, country. For the because benefit. if we had brought in yeah. this and if we had mixed it up with the current fertilizers and the earth, I believe our entire agriculture system would have got damaged. Unimaginable. That's the word to be used. So when I use the word wrong, it's not used in light way. Let, yes. let, let, let me tell you what, went, what yes. went in. When the samples were brought in, it was sent to first set of samples. It went to National Plant Quarantine Service and they came up with a very clear cut report saying that this particular sample that was brought in is having containing plant pathogenic bacteria especially the bacteria that can cause diseases to major crops in this country. Mm. So then naturally, with all the authorities vested on, the, they said, nothing doing. This is the issue. And that's one another uh, uh, issue in Sri Lanka with respect to standards. Sri Lanka standards has issued a set of standards for importation of solid organic fertilizer by the number of uh, uh, 1704 of 2021, which was released in May this year. And it very categorically said the, the compost, solid compost or solid organic fertilizer, I'm sorry, that is being imported should be sterilized. So nothing doing. That means free from microorganisms. But the NPQA said was there are microorganisms and on top of that they are pathogenic. So two conditions have been violated actually. That is where Correct. the biggest issue is. So naturally they, they send their report to the National Fertilizer Secretary saying that this cannot be imported. But in an international trade, Tarindu, there's always another chance being given. 
Yes. So this, I mean, that, that's fine. Fair yes. enough. Yeah. So we, we gave another chance, another opportunity, and the samples came in. There are a lot of things that happened in between. I'm not going to speak on those things. Fully and and the, and, the, and the second sample also failed on the same line. Hmm. And the Director General of Agriculture, which uh, we are the NPQS, comes under the purview of, and the, and then the Plant Protection Act is being governed by the Director General of Agriculture by statute. Right. So he, he quite correctly said that, no, I'm not going to give the import permit. That's where the issue is. You cannot bring in material or a supplier cannot sell and bring material to Sri Lanka without that import permit. So remember, no import permit have been, permits or permit has been issued to import this consignment. That is where the problem is, Tarindu. I know I do understand the tender procedures have taken place in the correct way. Hmm. But whatever said and done, you cannot send a material which is not accepted by the recipient. Correct. I mean, we are the recipient, Tarindu. We are the ones who are paying money, isn't it? Absolutely. And we Six want million the dollars Exactly. And it's more than that. Yeah. This Six million dollars, Tarindu, is exactly. only for this consignment. Okay. Remember, there are four more consignments to come. The total value is $42.3 million. Not a joke. Not a joke. Every consignment. And, here, and we are a country that is struggling for dollars. Exactly. Exactly. So this is why many people ask me whether this decision taken is because of a foreign currency issue. Though I do understand there's a foreign currency issue. I mean, the way things happen, Tardu, I, I cannot believe that there have been foreign currency issue to take this decision. Because we are spending lavishly. This is like someone who is struggling for money going and buying a luxury uh, Prada bag. <laughs> See, so that's, that's, that's the way it works. So right now the issue is that the DOA, Department of Agriculture, is not issuing the permit. Yes. But unfortunately, due to some forces, the ship is here. Has it docked in? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. because okay. uh, And uh, the media uh, is also constantly media. monitoring I mean, there are, this. There are a million nice washing. I mean, keep that in mind, Tarindu. That, that's the best thing happened. That's a big, that's a big dialogue always about these things right now. We have people did not discuss it. I mean, we didn't come and discuss with you all about fertilizer in previously. But no, now it's about happening because yes. it's about agriculture. It's happening because we do understand the importance of the nutrients and also importance of our ecosystem. Remember? Correct. That's correct. exactly why we don't want this consignment to come in and be landed. Me as a scientist, Tarindu. I mean, I always think you, you better pay that money and get let this material go away from Sri Lanka. Yes. But it, it's easier said than done. I know that we are in a situation, we are in a problem, we are in trouble with... So right now, are they saying pay the six million and then it's done and the other consignments are... We'll forget about it. Let's wait, Tarindu. Let's wait until what the court says. What the court decision is given on 30th or yes. thereafter will matter a lot. Correct. But remember, don't forget, this sample was measured or assessed for microbes that relate to this consignment of consignment of material that has been brought in. Four other consignments will be fresh and they have to be tested again mm. before they have been imported. Yes. So that's the process. And I'm sure the Sri Lanka will move on that process. And Professor, I have a bit of a concern here as to how many ministers we have on this matter. <laughs> because we hear about an agriculture minister and then yeah. we hear about a fertilizer minister. Yeah. And sometimes the uh, they, I mean, because we see this honestly as the general public and as the media, what we see is that this is when the problem. This is more like a passing of the hot potatoes. When yeah. the potato is too hot, every party is happy to throw it to another party. Exactly. Because sometimes we see one minister saying, "Oh, you know what? That's an issue with the fertilizer minister." Then they say, "No, no, that's an issue with this particular party." Sometimes yeah. we hear them say, "Look, this is a problem with this particular director general of agriculture, yeah. or whoever it may be." Professor, what is this whole mechanism here? Yeah. I mean, the, the, this is a pathetic situation, as I heard. And, but, but I don't want to get into this political deliberations yeah, and so not. on. Yes. But of course, when you say minister, it's, they are talking about the cabinet minister. Yes, so the right. cabinet minister of agriculture and there are state ministries. So there are state ministers and there is a state minister responsible for fertilizer usage in this country. Okay. So that, that, that's where this that's issue where is. The issue but, is. but we really see that both ministers are working hand in hand, at least in front of media or in, in, in other work as well. So it's it's a collective effort, as far as I say. I mean, you, um, if something goes wrong, I mean, something goes well, everyone will get the credit, Tarindu. If something goes wrong, everyone responsible will have to be responsible. Understood. You cannot pass the buck. Understood. Professor, now also, right now, where are we on this matter? Because we see gazette after gazette being issued, I don't want to use the word, but let's say revoked, um, and then issued again, you revoke it again. It's it, it's it's a it's a game of it seems like a game of cat and mouse. You know, yeah, we are going with yeah. this. No, we are going back again. Going this, going back. Yeah. More like a two steps forward, three steps back kind of a approach. Right now, professor, as we are meeting here in in uh, mid um, November, 
what exactly is the situation? Okay, when a decision is made, uh, Tarindu, uh, that has a bigger impact on the country's economy, that should be a well thought of decision. I mean, you have to look at the evidence, scientific information that is being available, Correct. and you have to, you should be able to predict the future, at least in the short run, and then and only then come up with policy directives. Now, all these imposition of gases, revoking, as you said, of gases, all says that there is no stability. There is another thinking. word that the, uh, the society is using, but we are avoiding that, yeah, right. so that we do not so, touch on the sensitivity. Yeah. No, the, the, the important point is there is no stability. In other words, exactly. in other words the decisions are being made without proper con proper consultation Correct. or pro without looking at the real scientific base. Because those days when a gasset is issued, that it is with a lot of deliberation and exactly. taken very seriously. Exactly. So, the gasset cannot be a joke. At the end, right? So it, it, I mean, the way it has happened is like that, very unfortunately. But what is happening right now? I mean, a few days ago, that uh, honourable minister of agriculture also came in public and said, finally, they have decided to allow the private sector to import fertilizer. Yes. Now, to do that, Tarindu, there is a gazette notification that was issued on sixth May, two thousand twenty-one. After the cabinet of ministers decided to stop importation of synthetic fertilizer on twenty-seventh April. Now, these two things will have to take place, two things in the sense at least this gasset has to be revoked or a new gasset notification should come in allowing the private sector to import. So, though there are decisions seem to be deviating from their original decision, looking at what is happening at the ground level, listening to people, the scientists, especially the farming community, at least good at this later stage some decision has been taken to allow private sector to import fertilizer, but government was very, very clear. They are moving ahead with the policy, green green agricultural policy. That's fine. That's yes, very good. Correct. So that whatever, whoever the people, whoever the entities or areas we are going into this type of agriculture will be subsidized. Correct. Good. And I, th I think though, though that's the way to move forward, Tarindu. That exactly the mechanisms, mechanisms that we are proposing from square one. And I'm glad to see that it's going to happen. And Professor, as you very correctly said, I mean, we are a country with an agriculture, her agriculture heritage of you know centuries you can't change it in six no months way, you can't do no that way. and professor now in this time period there were so many different alternatives that were being brought like for example there were certain um, liquid fertilizers they said oh this is organic liquid uh, fertilizer and then professor unfortunately we saw in the media as well we saw how people were showing some of these um, things given saying organic fertilizer i mean there were glass pieces in them there were uh, polythene bag pieces in them. What went wrong there, Professor, <laughs> from your understanding, from a yeah. purely scientific viewpoint? Yeah. I mean, people are talking about mafias these days. Let me start like that. Yes. I mean, people are talking about fertilizer mafia, paddy mafia, rice mill mafia, and so on. This is also like a like a organic mafia. I'm not blaming the people who are doing organic agriculture. People are doing organic farming. It's like, I mean, like in, they are in a religion, for example. Correct, correct, I mean, correct. that's that's an activity that has to be done with a lot of preparation, with a lot of energy, a lot mm. of finances as which well. Which was happening. Which was happening for quite a long period of time. Correct. Even now, 2.5%, though it's less, 2.5% of the agricultural land in this country is cultivated to organic farming. Okay. We should not forget that. And they are earning a lot of foreign exchange through this country. Correct. That is the line that we have to promote, Tarindu. Promote with the right policies, but not by jeopardizing the normal system. Exactly. And with the right inputs as well. Correct. That is where the issue is. When Correct. you try to come up with a huge business opportunity like this, there are always opportunities. And what you told me a little while ago is a good example for that. When you lack quality control and when you are not prepared to do that, just allowing things to proliferate just for the sake of achieving an objective which is not practicable enough, mm. these are the things that will happen. This is something similar to having illegal products brought, in, brought to Sri Lanka, like Understood. in the case of pesticides and fertilizer. Understood. Same thing. So has the government finally realized that this sudden U-turn of things is not the way forward and now that's why they are now looking at allowing some of the... Look like itself. it's a good thing, but it's late right now. But I mean, there's well, always when, something to say. When will we see the impact of this? Project? Because no. we are being told that we have enough uh, paddy stocks until next year towards March, April yeah. and that by, yeah. by that time we'll have enough paddy stocks for the rest of the yeah. year. Yeah. Is that something we can believe in? 
Tarindu, we are used to talking about paddy. I also speak a lot about paddy because it's our major staple. But we can't that only is, that. That's not the only thing. Uh, we are, it's, it's a holistic thing that we have to Correct. understand. We bring in examples, Tarindu, because people have to understand what we say. Correct. But it's a holistic thing. There's paddy, there's maize, there's vegetables. You know the problem that we have right now is not only because of fertilizer, it's because of the extreme weather as well. Yes. So things, when they get coupled up, confound with each other, situations are worse, becoming worse. And as I predicted, the in the previous case, Tarindu, our paddy yields is going to be reduced by about 25%. And our, and our tea yields, unless we take emergency action, we have seen that the government has finally resort to bring in ammonium sulfate fertilizer for, the, for tea cultivation. I do understand about 60,000 metric tons have been imported already. Another 38,000 metric tons to be imported to support the tea cultivation. Absolutely. Now, that's our major export earner. Even right. if you are to purchase food Tarindu from abroad, we need cash. Correct. And, and as is what was giving us that. Exactly. Professor, we are going to come back to you on more details on that. Stay tuned. We will be back after this short break. This is Biznomics. <music> Welcome back to Biznomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. Our focus is on the current agriculture and fertilizer related crisis that the Sri Lankan economy is facing. And we are in conversation with Professor Buddhi Marambe. Professor, now for a long time, even our decision makers seem to be in denial that this is a problem. They refuse to agree that this is a problem, exactly. that this is a crisis. They yeah. kept denying it, yeah. which is absolutely seems to be like the common approach when there is a problem, so deny it, saying no, it's not there. But from the way you see things, because I'm, I'm, I believe you're someone whom we can call as somebody with the front row seats to the entire action in the agriculture arena, with regard to our key crops like our paddy, then our tea, even the vegetables, you know, which we need as a country to consume. Professor, for the next year, how gloomy is the situation looking? I know we touched upon this earlier, but... Yeah. Clear us the clear clear yeah. clear out all the details for Let us. Let me give you a few statistics in this case. I mean, these are not the statistics coming out of my mind. They are from groundwork that have been done by agricultural economists in this country. And according to them, though I say there's about 25% reduction based on past information, the calculations done by the Sri Lanka Agricultural Economics Association say there's about 30 to 35% decline that we can anticipate in this mass season which is our main cultivating season, Tarindu. Correct. Right? When you, I mean, we, we see it's happening on the ground right and now, even um, before it's been planted. Professor, I believe reductions in crop Reduc also means increase of prices. Exactly. Don't forget that. I mean, they're, they're, Basic they're, economics. these are all interwoven. They, I mean, they're economics. And yes. live, I mean, don't forget the livelihood of people. Yes. It's we are not going only to come the producer. To, come to one okay. that it's not, one, only yes. the, not only the producer, it's consumer as well. It's yes. good that you're going to come up with a question. So likewise, in all crops, Tarindo, the way it goes right now, though we see maize crop is getting some benefit. I, we learned that about 5,000 metric tons of urea being distributed through agrarian service centers, but at a huge price, massive price. That's still fine because people are getting some, some nutrients in order to make sure that fertilizer can be used to cultivate their crops and gain some, some uh, acceptable yield level of yield. So likewise, if the, if the fertilizer is not going to come up at the correct time, though the provisions are granted for the private sector to bring it, mm -hmm. this is going to be a useless exercise, Tarindu. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I, I must glad the government understood it even late, as, yeah. as he told. Better late than never. Better late than never. Usually, Tarindu, when international trade takes place, there is a time. Yes. Where the trading take place. Usually people start uh, start uh, uh, importing fertilizer or placing tenders in the month of June, July because that's where the fertilizer prices are low. When you come to the latter part of the year, because of because most of the things are petroleum products, you know yeah, that. Yeah. Because of the petroleum prices and so on and also because of the demanding cultivation in many countries like in India, China and Russia the fertilizer prices goes up. And now I believe, Professor, the problem is further compounded by all the supply chain issues. Because exactly. now, even China if you want to buy, even if it's available, where are the containers? Where's the space in the containers? Exactly. Forget about the space in the containers. China has stopped exporting urea. Okay. And Russia has curtailed. Because it's all because of their, their, their food security. And that's the line of thinking governments will have, Tarindu. I mean, we are worried about our food security. India is worried about India's food security. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, issue does not take place here. We all look after our countrymen, our country people, our country's economy. That's where the line of thinking should be, not in a superficial manner, but on a scientific base. 
And that is why we always said from the very beginning, the decision, the way it has been implemented right now, until this moment that I speak to you, right, the, the impact is going to be negative. At the, at the quantities, at the levels that I spoke a little while and ago. And even, Professor, if you look at now, the water was released on time from the reservoirs, but people, the farmers did not yeah. want to use it. Yeah. Now, even that water is not going to really come back. No way. <laughs> no way. That's what I say. It's a precious resource that we are losing. I mean, for agriculture, water is required. We do know that. For paddy, we are, since we cultivate in lowland ecosystems, water, water retention is, a, is an important point. So we need to supply, provide adequate volumes of water for the people to go in and do paddy cultivation. Now, when it gets wasted, what are we thinking of? I mean, what are we trying to look at at the end? We are losing the precious resource as well. I mean, forget about the yield at the end. For sure. Those are things that you have to be very careful in terms of decision making further. And Professor, if you look at the plight of the farmers, because I believe as a part of your research work and the work you do, you are constantly in touch with the farmers as well at the grassroots level. What is what is their plight, uh, Professor? We do see the anger, we do see the um, we do see these uh, farmers really upset, and unfortunately, some of the political leaders also say these farmers are you know coming here under the various influencers, maybe a minority, yeah. but majority of them we do see that they have a genuine concern. Yeah. No, loans are due, personal expenses to be met, they have families to be maintained. I'm quite sure that these are very harsh times for them. Very, very harsh times, Tarindu. I mean, there may be political influence. So you cannot exclude those things. You cannot Correct. exclude everything but from the system. It doesn't mean we can put everybody no under No way, that. no way. You cannot credit everything into that account. No way. <laughs> I'm totally out. The, the important thing is farmers will come to roads without going there. I mean, they will be on the roads without going to their paddy fields, for example. I mean... When that happens, we have to understand what is brewing up. I mean, they really feel, I mean, you and me, forget about our professions right now, Tarindu, correct, we correct. are consumers. We are worried about what is there in the market yes. for us to purchase. But they are producers and consumers. Don't forget that. For them, if we do not produce, at least for them to consume, then of course they are, they are, their food security cannot be met. Further, moving, moving further, if they cannot earn a money, earn income out of this agriculture, then eating or consuming food is not the lifestyle, not the only way of living. What about the other requirements? I mean, the, all those things matter. I feel really sorry, actually, really sorry about this group of people, mm. uh, our farming community. Who what, what, been, do, what are they telling you, Professor? I mean, I what, mean are, uh, what are the difficulties you see, when you meet them? Uh, yeah, I mean, all those difficulties that they tell me when I speak to them, you will also hear, you will also see on television screens right so now. So it is the real picture. It is the real scenario. I mean, they, 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 there's no hanky-panky here. There are no ifs and buts here. Their livelihoods are affected very, very badly. Forget one second. Forget about the political political uh, uh, scenario which right here, which is the minority. Which is the minority right now. But if farmers' livelihood are not safeguarded, we cannot expect prosperity in agriculture. That is something that we should never forget. We may we may talk. I may come to this talk show and go out. That's that's not what's going to happen and what is expected at the ground level as well. Mm -hmm. What we are trying to do is to educate people. At least now, at this latter stage, though we have been telling this for the past seven months continuously, at least right now, do understand this dangerous scenario and please don't make it irreversible. That's our issue always. I mean, when farmers move out of agriculture, it may be a political statement, but who is, who is going to stay there in a profession which will never give return to their investment? Just imagine, it is good even for a, for a starting from the president to the, to the lowest level uh, 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 social character, social strata level people in this country. That's what happens. So we have to be very careful, Tarindu, at least in the future. Let's take these evidence-based decisions. And if you have time, allow me to explain one more Please thing. Please do. One, the biggest, one of the biggest problems that, that is faced by our farmers, Tarindu, they do not know what they get. For example, take this nano fertilizer that came to my mind. I just want to let you know, since you asked a question, I forgot to answer that. The fertilizer being brought in, it has been brought as nano nitrogen. But yes. if you look at the pattern, it's actually a urea based fertilizer. And what is important, Tarindu, to let people know what is happening. And if you are moving into organic Don't agriculture, try to hoodwink them. Hoodwink. if you move on to organic agriculture, nano technological products are not allowed in organic agriculture. Not even in Sri Lanka. There's a SLA standard called 1324 of 2018, which categorically says nano products, nanotechnological products are not allowed. 
in organic agriculture. But I do understand right now, it is not the pure organic agriculture people are talking about. They are talking about, well, coined word called green agriculture, that is fine. In other words, we are looking at the eco-friendly agricultural practices. And that has been something that has been promoted for a long period of time right now. It is a matter of putting things in practice in the correct perspective. And that is why you have to get the support of the farming community. If you lose trust, Tharingo, you do something without identifying correctly and after farmers identify this is not what is being expected, then you lose trust. And that trust you cannot purchase later. That is an important point. We all have to be in this game thoroughly together. You, me, farming community, policy makers, everyone. But then this trust and confidence, that is where things will work. To do that, you give the correct information, accurate information and facilitate making sure agricultural inputs are there at the correct time at correct quantities and the marketing channels being set up so to minimize the imperfectness of all the systems. Professor, on a final note, I, my final question is also something related to the farming community once again because I, I think we need to focus on them. There's exactly. enough talk about policy and the consumer, yeah. the farmer. Let's, they might not be able to come to a studio and talk yeah. but we need to give them a voice as well and I appreciate you doing that here right now with me. Professor, now we saw the government pulling out of the controlling prices of rice uh, the, or the paddy, you know, they said, okay, look, you know what, we are pulling out, let the uh, mill owners do whatever they want. And the mill owners very, they had the audacity to say, yeah. try and control us if you can. Yeah, and exactly. they, they were proven right. They mm. were proven absolutely mm. right. Now, at the same time, we see the government now saying, look, we are not getting into the fertilizer either. Let the private companies do that. And we are out of it. We will support uh, this whole eco uh, agriculture, organic agriculture, we are not going to be into this fertilizer. That was like the private sector. Aren't we pushing the farmers into the traps, in, into the snaring jaws of these private mm. sector mafias by doing yes, this? Yes, but we have to look at it very carefully, Tarindu. Although the, the government says that it's up to the private sector, there are certain parliamentary enacted acts that governs the whole system. Such as? Such as, take the fertilizer, regulation of fertilizer act is there okay. in terms of importation and use. So they can't Fertil just wash their hands no, no, off? For, for you and me, I was telling this earlier, we cannot go and open an LC and bring in fertilizer to this country okay. because the quantity of fertilizer that we brought in to the country is being decided by the government research institutes. So it's based on that only fertilizers have to be brought in. But one thing can happen with respect to fertilizer and pesticides nowadays because the world market price is high. Without a subsidy, it will be an enormous, exorbitant cost to the farming community. And that cost will have to be passed on to the consumer at the end, Tarindu. Government might say, we are going to give, give it cheaper. But then who is going to spend money on that? It's the taxpayer's money once again. It's our money once again. So it, it, that this vicious cycle will continue unless there are checks and balances being given in the system. Government has to play the role of the watchdog. They are the one who monitor the system and the facilitate things to take place. And the farming community should not be put in trouble, number one. But you cannot put consumers in trouble as well. So this is the economic scenario that the government will have to handle. It's not that giving everything for the private sector to decide. No way, I do understand. In a, but in an open economic policy, you cannot go ahead with price controls as well. Okay. And we are seeing the repercussions of that. Had it to be allowed to be floated gradually, then yes. even the increase in price would not be felt by the consumers at the end. But unfortunately, what we see right now is that there's a lengthy uh, price control is over for a longer period of time. All of a sudden, they remove the price control and the price has shut up. Correct. Unfortunate part, unfortunate economic policy. There has to be a better plan. Exactly. Professor Budhi Marambe, it is an absolute pleasure to host you once again. I know this is a very sensitive topic. It's a topic where easily an outsider can look at and say, okay, they're making it political. Yeah. But the truth is, this is a matter that concerns the national security. The, na the national food security is a part of the national security exactly. of the country. Exactly. And exactly, Professor, yes. I know you have been personally attacked in many ways because of you speaking for what is right. But we appreciate you coming forward and sharing information and letting the public know because my duty as the host of this show with my team is to make sure that the public of this country knows what's going on and also give a platform where the farmers could actually be heard. Their concerns can be heard through the voices of intellectuals such as you and this matter gets solved as soon as possible because end of the day, there's only one Sri Lanka for all of us and exactly. we want that to be a country where there is food security, there is national security and a good future for our future generations. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wish you good luck. Thank you very much, Tarindu, for calling me once again. Thank you.
And with that, we wrap up today's episode of Businomics. No matter what business you may be in, be safe and have a profitable week ahead. I'll see you with the next episode.